Hey, Mike the Marketing Medic here, and today I wanted to do something a little bit different, and that is I'm not going to talk about marketing. One of the things that I'm very passionate about is the whole thing that you have to be credible when you're online. That's why I created the Credibility Accelerator Vortex, right? And the thing about that is it's more than just having a website and a blog and a funnel, right? There's Your audience needs to know who you are. They need to be able to relate to you or, um, or, or and, and identify with you, right? And so the thing is, is some people might relate and identify with me and some others might not, and that's fine. But it's better to be on one end of the spectrum. I'd rather have, you know, some people love me and some people hate me than everybody uh, just be, like, indifferent towards me, all right? So... What I thought I would do is I would tell you my story and then you can make a decision on what side of the fence you're on. If you like me, if you hate me, if you trust me, if you distrust me, that'll be on you after you hear my story. All right? So I thought I would break it up into three sections. The first section would be my life before the arc. That's where we are now. It's where the place that, uh, the place where I live. And then the second will be my life at the arc. Things changed a lot there. Well, there's some loud crickets here. And then the third thing will be not my life at the Ark, but the business that I've uh, that I've created while at the Ark. All right, so it'll be those three videos. So let's start with uh, pre Ark. All right, I'll tell you what, uh, how how I came to to come here. All right. So basically, it's a it's a very boring story at the beginning. I grew up in the, the suburbs of it's called the mountain. I grew up on the mountain. It wasn't a mountain. <laughs> it's just the suburbs of Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I was a pretty middle of the road sort of guy. Um, didn't really stand out too much. I uh, just sort of sailed through school. Um, and actually, I was I was actually given a lot of a hard time from uh, most of my teachers because they said I wasn't really living up to my potential. I barely passed uh, grade 10 chemistry. I barely passed grade uh, 10 math. I was, yeah, I wasn't struggling, but I was just doing the minimum I needed to do to get by. And what um, what my teachers didn't understand is that those grade 10 and those grade 9, those grade 11 marks, they didn't matter. Uh, because I wanted to go to university, and universities only look at, at that time, your grade 13 marks. And so I actually, I started to turn on a little bit in grade 12, and I got higher marks in grade 12 just sort of to set the path. And then in grade 13, I ended up graduating with a, a bang on 90 percent average, which was the third highest average in my school, which allowed me to uh, go to university on a full scholarship. So I ended up at uh, Guelph University, where I was doing a wildlife biology degree, and uh, I was doing that because I liked wolves, and I was like, I like wolves, I like the outdoors, what else uh, What else can I do? And so it was funny, my, uh, my, my parents were like, so what are you going to do with this wildlife bi biology degree? And to be honest, I never had an answer for them. And that's one of the things I encourage kids to do now, kids, youth, is to not just go into things blindly and actually look at what the end result is going to be that they're trying to achieve. And sort of skipping ahead, but when I wrote my book, Veer Towards Success, that's the first thing is you need to have a vision. And if you don't have a vision, you can't, you can't really arrive there. So that was my problem in universities. I didn't have a vision, so I wasn't, I wasn't, on, a, I wasn't on a course to anywhere specific. And so it was funny. This is this is a story that that you might uh, might get a kick out of. So, I was uh, I was in my third year university. I just finished my microbiology exam, and in that exam, if anybody's taking microbiology, you know that what you do is you look in microscopes, and there's little red dots in each microscope. You just go from table to table to table, and there's always microscopes with red dots, and you have to identify what sort of microbe that is and what stage of its life, and blah blah blah. All right, so. I, I finished that test. I was like, what am I doing? I don't care about these red dots. Not in the least little bit. So I was really frustrated. So I ended up going home to my parents' house. And they were away for the weekend, which was awesome. So it gave me, you know, this house all to myself because I was living in kind of like a, kind of like a frat house at, uh, at, at university where we had parties all the time. So it was good to get away from the noise, get away from the parties, get away from all that sort of stuff. And I just went home and I was just, you know, just chilling at my parents' place. And what I got there was I was just sitting on the couch downstairs eating popcorn. And uh, this new show came out. It was the, uh, what's it called? It was the, uh, the pilot for, it was this pilot to this new series that was coming out. And that pilot was called Baywatch. This is a true story. So I was watching Baywatch. First time anybody had ever seen Baywatch, right? With David Hasselhoff and Pam Anderson and all that. And I was like, yes, I, I was a lifeguard. I love being a lifeguard. I should be a lifeguard. But in Hamilton, there's no oceans or beaches, right? Uh, being a lifeguard isn't really a profession in Hamilton. It's what, you know, kids do. 
So I was like, okay, what's like a lifeguard that I could do? Because I like being a lifeguard. I thought, oh, I could be, I could work on an ambulance. And I had no idea what that meant at all. So I ended up staying, uh, staying home because this was back before, um, this was back before internet, right? So and if I wanted to get information about how to become an ambulance person, then I needed to go to the library. And I guess the library, no, it was open. So I went to the library the next day, I think it was Sunday, and I went to the library and I went to the careers section and I found out about what you needed to do to, be, to work on an ambulance. And I found that there was a college in Niagara, which wasn't too far from me. And this is gonna be a long video, I think. Hang in there, because it's gonna stay like this. <laughs> yeah, so I went to, uh, I found out about Niagara College. So on Monday, I stayed home. I called them on Monday, I'm like, hey, you know, um, I want to be an ambulance attendant. What do I got to do? I'm like, oh, dude, you're, you're too late. All the written applications have already been submitted. We're actually having our, our last interview and testing day tomorrow. But whoever I talked to was just a nice woman. She's like, you know what? I'll tell you what, come on out tomorrow. You can do the written application then, and then you can do the interviewing and the live testing, you know, with everybody else. So it's like, sweet. So the next day, sure enough, I went to uh, Niagara College. And keep in mind, I had three years of university level um, biology under my belt. So there's a few tests we had to write, which were very silly tests. You know, they were just, you had all these w words, you had to match the words with like the body part. And so anyway, it was, it was ridiculous. I pretty much scored perfect on all the tests that they, I needed to write. And then we also had to do a physical test where we had to run, I think it was a mile. I can't remember. I think it was a mile. But I was running uh, 10K races and I was racing bikes. I was racing triathlons at the time. So at the same time, this, this mile thing was a joke. And I just, I just, you know, I lapped everybody. It was crazy. So there was that. And the last thing of the day was the interview. And so I, because I was uh, not really supposed to be there, I, I didn't want to get in front of anybody in the interview line. So I waited until I was dead last. There's two interviewers. And what ended up happening is because I was dead last and there was nobody else around, they both interviewed me. And at the, the right at the end, they're like, you know, we don't usually do this, but we can let you know that you're, that you're in, right? You got perfect on the test. You won the, uh, the race. Your interview was awesome. So you're in. So anyway, uh, in a matter of moments, I kind of decided to quit university and go to college in, 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 the, in Canada. I don't know if it's the same in the States, but it's different in Canada. In Canada, universities are just, you know, you'll learn a bunch of academic stuff and you can't really put it to use in real life. And then in college is um, where you actually learn skills that you can actually apply and get a job. Anyway, so that was my plan. I was going to quit university. I finished off the semester. I was going to quit university and go to college. And that's what I did. And so I, uh, I went to college the next year, got my ambulance certificate and ended up uh, becoming an ambulance attendant in Hamilton. But since I'd already had three of my four years completed in university, I went back to Guelph and I finished my degree while working part time on the ambulance. So that is the story of how I became, or I've worked, worked on the ambulance. What I didn't mention is my jobs through university is I was a raft guide. So I was a raft guide actually pretty close to here on the Ottawa River. I was a raft guide for two summers up in the Canadian Arctic on the Yellow, on the Coppermine River where we finished in Yellowknife. We started in Yellowknife, we finished in Coppermine. And then I was also a raft guide in the, uh, on the Ubai River in the French Alps of, well, France. So those were the, my part-time jobs, uh, summer jobs when I went to university. All right. so. Now I'm an ambulance and I graduate school. I'm working on the ambulance uh, part-time. Part-time was awesome because I could work when, there's so many shifts available. I could work when I wanted, didn't work when I didn't want. Now, um, when people say they don't care about money, I kind of think that they're kind of douchebaggery. And uh, so I don't like to say that I don't care about money, but at the same time, I'm not strongly motivated by money. I'm motivated by freedom. So everything I do has to have freedom at attached. And a lot of people place, uh, I think the more money they have, the more freedom they're going to have. But what I found is that the more money I wanted, the harder I had to work. And if I was busy working, then I wasn't free. And so I've always tried to do stuff that allowed me to do what I wanted to do and give me the freedom. And it's kind of a, been a balance. And so where other people might work all year long to save up the money to go to France, I just got a job and was a raft guy in France doing super cool stuff. The trips that I went on in the Arctic, those were, I think those were like five or six thousand uh, dollar trips that the, the clients were paying to go on those trips. And um, I was being paid a few thousand dollars plus tips to do the trips. And I did the same thing as they did and even had more fun. So, because I got to steer. Anyways, um, I'm off track again. So I was back in Hamilton. I'm working on the ambulance, right? And I'm bored. 
I'm like, this is a boring, boring, boring life. It's, it's kind of cool working on the ambulance. I was part-time. I got to go on canoe trips all the time. I was racing Ironmans. So I was doing stuff. But at the same time, well, sorry, I wasn't racing Ironmans then. I was racing triathlons then. Um, but I raced Ironmans later. Anyways, where was I? So I was bored. Um, what was cool about where I was working, though, is we had a pilot program for paramedics. I was an ambulance attendant, which meant that... I was driving around the paramedic who could actually do the cool stuff, and then we had boring patients, I would take care of them. So I decided I wanted to be a paramedic. I wanted to give the drugs, I wanted to do the intubations, I wanted to do all that cool stuff. Well, this was just a pilot program, and it didn't look like there would be any opportunity for me to actually become a paramedic. So I applied to some of the coolest schools that I could find in the United States. I applied Northern California, Oregon, uh, Washington, and Colorado. I ended up getting accepted into the Swedish Medical Center in Englewood, Colorado, just outside of Denver. And so my, uh, my ambulance crew back in Hamilton, they're like, you're dumb, man, because you can go get that training, but it won't, it won't be recognized back in Hamilton. You'll never get a job. So we don't know what you're doing. I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. So I went down to uh, Denver, and I didn't really have that much money after tuition and all that stuff. So I ended up living in my band. I had a great big, long, great Econoline, Ford Econoline band like Neil Young sings about. And I lived in that van in the Safeway parking lot outside of the um, outside of the the hospital. All right, so I'm doing that. I met a really cool girl in my class. Her name was Carolyn. We kind of liked each other. She had a condo at Copper Mountain, Colorado, at the ski resort, and so I was going up there a lot. And I met the fire crew there, and they actually offered me a job as the medical officer once I graduated from uh, from paramedic school. So I thought that was pretty cool. But there was a couple problems. One is I'm a Canadian citizen and I wasn't allowed to work in the US. Uh, the other problem was I really liked Carolyn. I thought that maybe one day she might be the one, but I didn't know. But what happened is at the end of uh, paramedic school, the government basically gave it, the US government gave me two choices. You either go back to Canada or you stay here. But the only way you can stay here is if you get married. And so I did not marry Carolyn for my green card. But because again, like we both thought like maybe six months, a year from now, we might want to get engaged, but they weren't giving us that window of opportunity. So anyway, I was like, okay, let's do it. So we ended up getting engaged. I was the, uh, the uh, I became the medical officer for the Copper Mountain Fire Department, which is really cool because I got to do all the firefighter stuff. And I actually also got to transform their basic life support service into an advanced life support service. And that was really cool. So when I was in Colorado, I, uh, yeah, I worked in the fire department. I also got a part-time job working in St. Vincent's General Hospital in Leadville. So I was working in the emergency room there, doing really cool stuff there because the doctors at uh, weekends and nights weren't in the hospital. They were at home. And so when a really sick patient came in, I was it. I had to do everything until the doctor arrived. And sometimes they weren't answering their phone. It, was, it wasn't a good system there. But anyways, I got to do some really cool stuff there. So I, uh, I stayed in Colorado for almost five years. Um, not surprisingly, things didn't work out with me and Carolyn, but um, we stayed friends and it was all cool. But I, I figured, and I was able to stay, I had some sort of pink card or something that allowed me to stay as a resident in the States. But, um, where was I? Yeah, but I knew I had to come home. So one of the reasons is because I love fresh water. <laughs> I love swimming in Colorado. It's got fresh water, but it's freezing cold. There's no place you can just go for a swim. So anyways, we're getting close now. I can see, I can see this wrapping up. So I moved back to Canada and I ended up, um, I was having a hard time finding a job. Um, as it turned out, while I was away, Ontario introduced full-fledged paramedics into uh, Ontario. So there was a chance that I could work as a paramedic, but nobody was hiring there in a huge province-wide hiring freeze. So I couldn't get a job. So what did I end up doing is I went into Sunnybrook Hospital where I met with a doctor and I got him to hire me to start a pilot program where I was um, testing what uh, paramedics could do with diabetic patients that they meet on scene. And I won't go into the details of that because I'll get off track again. But anyways, that's what I was doing. I was working at Sunnybrook Hospital in this job that I basically created for myself. While I was there, I met this nurse named uh, Mary Beth. You know, right? And she and I were doing some stuff together. So uh, one day I was at home and I get this phone call out of the blue from Martin Boucher from Canadian Helicopters. And he explained to me how he was opening up a brand new air ambulance service in Ontario. And he wanted to know if I wanted to be the supervisor for the Ottawa base. Now, I hadn't applied for that job. 
So I didn't know who this guy was or what he was talking about. But what ended up happening was Mary Beth, remember Mary Beth? Well, she was working on this new air ambulance program. She told the vice president about me, how I'd been a paramedic for so long. Oh, I forgot to mention, when I was in Colorado, uh, working as a firefighter, I got my master's degree in management. So she told him how I was a paramedic, how I had university experience, how I had my master's degree, how I had leadership you know, experience and training, and how I'd be perfect to supervise the Ottawa base. So anyway, I ended up uh, accepting that job. I ended up being responsible for opening the four bases in Ontario. So the bases in Ottawa, of course, London, Kenora, and Moosonee. And I ended up even getting to work some uh, shifts up in Moosonee, which is uh, like in uh, Northern Canada on James Bay. But anyways, just doing that, flying around, saving lives, that was pretty cool. Um, but again, uh, as a supervisor, I was I was working my shifts, but I was also responsible for the crew when I was off shift. So my freedom was quite limited, and I didn't really like that. I also don't like working nights. I'm terrible at staying awake past 11 p.m. So it, it was it was tough on me. So what I wanted to do was use my university, or sorry, not my university, but yeah, my university training, my management training, my master's degree stuff in management, and combine that with, oh, <laughs> again, looping back, I was also doing some part-time work with Colorado Outward Bound in Leadville when I was there. And so I wanted to bring some of, I wanted to merge my master's stuff with my Colorado Outward Bound stuff and create leadership training here in, uh, in Canada. So I started to do that as a part-time business and in the late 1990s there was a lot of demand for that. So I was, I was doing quite well. But one day when I was setting up a rappel off of a cliff, I, uh, I made a mistake and I fell 35 feet and I broke my arm and my leg and my back. And that gave me the much needed break from paramedic work that I needed. And during that time, before I was healthy enough to go back to work, but healthy enough that I could, you know, walk around with crutches, I, uh, I sold my house, I sold my cottage. Oh, I had this awesome log cabin on 51 acres on this, on this beautiful spring-fed lake. I sold that, I sold my house, and I bought the Ark, okay? It was a 6,000 square foot abandoned sawmill with uh, three walls and a roof. And, and I said, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to launch my team building business from here, that's gonna be my thing moving forward. And, uh, and that's it, that's all. I'm not even gonna go back to the paramedic stuff. So that, wow, I got there. That's what brings us up to the ARC. And uh, in the next video, I'll talk about the ARC and, and my lifestyle living here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that story and I'll see you in the next video. All right, see you then.